Hey everybody, this is Dave Laird, aka Ghost Meat. I'm playing on the right here, and I'm joined by Stephen Ebrey on the left. <laughs> Smooth intro. We're good at this. <laughs> uh, so Stephen and I played this game of Netrunner together in Los Angeles, California, on September 16th, 2023. This is the grand finals of the cut. So we both made top four. We advanced through as the Although top two. Like, and nice Steven has, you've dropped no like, games well, in the cut fine. at this point. So I, I have to win like two out. games in a row now to win US selfish. West Coast Nationals. <laughs> you just need to win this first game. Yeah. Or the next game if there's a next game. This particular matchup is Athule versus Asa, which I've already won against you twice. So Twice. Um, on the day, yeah. Once in Swiss, once earlier in the cut. Uh, that video we just did commentary for, so you can go back and watch that as well if you are interested in seeing me lose twice to this deck. <laughs> so I think we're joking here about like um, third time's a charm or like something, you know, cliche like that. Um, yeah, so are you thinking about approaching this any differently now? Or are you just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so you had a fair bit of time between. Uh, your last game and well, I'm not, no. this game and in the meantime i was talking to my friends from vancouver that i came with ryan berg hams and alec sindarin about how the hell do i beat this stool deck i've lost twice to it i have to play it again what's my game plan do i a play conservatively try to get to four points before i start doing a lot of self core damage um or do i just go hard and just do my regular essa game plan and just hope to win fast and hope to win and by milling enough agendas like out of your hand and off r d so my friend peter harris back home i'm texting him meanwhile and he's like play it slow play it safe so he's giving me like one option and then ryan berg is saying go nuts go essa do essa things so i'm feeling conflicted at this point about how to beat you <laughs> I'm not really sure what the right way to go is yet. I'm still considering that. It probably depends on what my opening hand is, actually. So we'll see yeah, how this and plays out. I mean, sometimes either choice is right as long as you pick one. Like, yeah. you know, for example, if you're going against asset spam, like, it's valid to try to contest the assets. It's also valid to ignore the assets and, like, try to win off r and yeah. um, But sometimes when you get, like, confused and, like, indecisive yeah. between those options, that's when you really lose the game. That's true, yeah. That's a good read. All right. So here we go. We've both decided to mulligan, I think. And so, for anyone unfamiliar with what these IDs do, Thule is a fairly new HB identity that says when the runner steals an agenda, they either must suffer core damage or pay a click and two credits. So, there's no option, you have to choose one of those if you hit an agenda that is not self-protecting. And my ID, Essa Afontov, says the first time each turn you suffer a core damage, Draw a card, and the court player has to sabotage two. And sabotage is really fun for the court player. Steven, what does the corp have to do with sabotage? Uh, it says the corp has to uh, trash cards from HQ equal to the number of sabotage, and any cards that you don't trash from HQ, you have to take from the top of R&D. Um, so you're kind of risking potentially some milling some bad agendas by doing it from yeah. R&D. Okay, so I've looked at my hand. You have done you've done this opening in both of our previous games. Ice HQ, Ice Remote, uh, The very first game I didn't have an ice for HQ and I ate a chest too. Oh, that's but right, yeah, 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 yeah. But you've gone for is... the aggressive, put something in the remote, turn one, try and get a Rashida off or a Stegadon scored yeah. or something. So here's my nemesis on the day, Pulse. This card did a lot of uh psychic damage to me, I think. It's a very taxing card to play against. On res, lose you lose a lot a click. of clicks, uh, and then you can uh, lose a click to get through it, and you'll also lose a crit. Yeah, so it's very labor intensive. Okay, so you've just decided this is my scoring remote. I'm going to res Managarm. You can either pay five or two clicks to get through, and then pay three more to trash it. I think Managarm is one of the better cards printed for Netrunner ever. It's very strong. Okay, so I just looked up at my friend Ryan. He was watching, <laughs> and I gave him a look, and he gave me a subtle nod and closed his eyes, like, yes, do it. 
do Essa things. So I've played Running Hot here, which gives me a core damage. I have to knock a card out of my hand. I draw a card, I go down to four hand size, but I do Sabotage 2 with my ID. I so choose to do both from R&D. Two cards and off R&D. It looks like an Ikawa just went down. Yeah. I didn't see what the other one was, but that's good for me. I also gained three more clicks from running hot. So I have... S what is it? Six. Oh no, I ran the remote, lost a bunch of clicks, and then played running hot to click, get a whole bunch of clicks. So I basically have like a whole turn again. And I had to use all of my money to res that pulse and that mana garm. Yeah. <laughs> I could have not raised the mana garm, but then you could have trashed it. So um, That's true. And yeah. then your scoring plan gets tougher throughout the game. Yeah. Uh, it would have broke me really bad to have to trash that mana garm too, though. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm just moneying up with a strike fund, and I'm bravadoing each HQ where you have zero credits to res anything, so that's pretty safe. I'm going to get seven bucks back. It's a net four credits. I ain't gonna act, access one card. Let's see what we get. Oh, Nicola. brutal. And I think I have the time and the money to steal this. But I have to pay double, because your ID says the same thing as Ikawa. So I need four credits and two clicks to steal this to escape unscathed. Which I don't think you have. I think you only have three until you get So I can do half of it, but I'm gonna take another core damage here instead of but, paying the, the Thule tax of of two credits. In it. So I've taken another core damage, even though I've already taken core damage this turn. So that's not ideal for Essa. You only want to do it once per turn, but I know that I need to steal three points as soon as possible against this deck to have a chance to, be, to beat it. <laughs> you don't realize it yet, because you don't know what I've milled, but you are already kind of at six points, because you've yes. milled enough of three-pointers. Um, exactly. So you're in a really good position i have a good start here yeah. don't want it. that's true however if you just install the spin doctor on managarm you can shuffle the cards i've milled back in so the essa player is always sad to see just any card go face down in any remote if there's face down cards in archives because they might not be the points that you hope they could be that's, that's a spin doctor so milling Spin Doctor is a, is a wonderful thing to see for Essa, as well as the Genos. So I, I think I'm thinking, boy, I have to both get money somehow, because I'm broke, yes. and find the Spin Doctor. Um, yeah, finding Spin is, is critical for you. I do have a Mad Dash in this deck, so if I just want to take a blind shot at... Uh, two cards and hope that one's a Nicola, I could win instantly. True, but, but it you is could a 48 also... card deck and there's only one Mad Dash, so the odds of me finding it in, in time are... The <laughs> color like... you can choose not to steal. So actually, if That's you had true. a Mad Dash, the correct play is to run archives. If you see a yeah. Kawa, decline Mad Dash archives. That's right, yeah. Same thing with Bologna. That's a, a nice play that you can do with Mad Dash. Or if you run R&D, hit Bologna, Mad Dash is in hand. Say so not paying, and then next click, run it with yeah. Mad Dash. And then hope they don't have a Spin Doctor to shuffle. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try and win an R&D here. Going with a Finality. Oh, Hitting and Steel only... Skin from Hand. So that's nice. Yeah. The Finality gives you a core damage, but you knew it was going to yeah. hit a Steel Skin. So yeah. you are doing well in every area except that... If I'm somehow able to tag you, your hand size is quite low, and I could play you. Yes, that's true. Okay, so two sabotage, one from HQ, one from R&D, and now I'm going to be in for four cards in R&D here. And I've got, it looks like, two clicks, and I've got six credits, so I can pay the Thule tax if I need to. Oh, you think about this one for a while. This, I think this is because it's a spin doctor, and I'm thinking about... If the next two cards are agendas, I will. Will I have enough time and money to take them without taking more damage? Yeah, you have so six I think about this for a while. Yeah, I think, I think I decided to not trash it, but I think that yeah. was a mistake. I think I should have trashed that. Yeah. There is. It was I lost in the mail. So but I do I get an ontological there. So now I'm at five points. Ontological is a great one to get versus Thule. Yeah. 
Um, sure is. Steal all of them, then well, first of all, you'll win the game. But also, I won't be able to get any free points. On that deal. That's right. So now I have to think about: Do I take the core damage, or do I pay a click into credits? Looks like I'm paying the click into credits. So I'm gonna go to four credits. Finality is a great card. It can close games. Um, Ryan and I decided the morning of the tournament to just throw one extra copy in to go up to two instead of one. So I ended up at 48 cards <laughs> this list, <laughs> which is kind of wild. But you're also just trashing a lot with Bankar, you're trashing a lot with, uh, with S's ability. And so I am running Archive's last click, and I'm going to be sad because I don't have the time to steal Ikawa. And I hit a knife. <laughs> okay, so now the game's afoot because next turn, if you can't get a spin doctor, then you're in trouble because I know you I can also run steal. know spin doctor's coming. I although do, although it's not the top card. So I think I have to draw for it. But also, oh, but I have Rashida. So Rashida is my worst nightmare here because you are getting spin doctor now. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be fair, even if I didn't have a Rashida, there's literally no reason I wouldn't spend my first click drawing because, like, I know I lose the game if I don't. Yeah, um, totally. So, but, like, find a nice yeah. to protect it or find the spin doctor that you can put on the yeah. board. Yeah. Uh, but definitely Rashida's ideal because then maybe I can get a spin doctor and a nice. Also, I, totally. I badly need money. And need money. So, yeah. um, I basically went from completely dead in the water to, like, mm -hmm. with the Rashida and spin, it's like, at least I'm back in the game. Mm -hmm. Still not. I'd still rather not be down zero to five. But sure. I'm at least <laughs> yeah, for sure. It looks like you have an ontological in hand, or is that a no? That's a stegodon, maybe. All right. So the spin doctor goes in the remote. Let's see what I did. <laughs> You're like, yeah, come at, come at me, bro. Oh, you know this is spin doctor because <laughs> you saw it and you chose not to trash it. Moronically. Don't worry, um, maybe they didn't so it looks like I have light the fire in hand. Ooh. Bravado in hand. And I think maybe uh, numb? Not sure. So I think right now I'm thinking about do I install light the fire and just put it on the table and then force you to res your spin doctor yeah. preemptively before I can spend the click that blows yeah, up. Yeah, so light the fire, I don't think I had seen this in a while. It took me a while to process. Um, yeah, it's a pretty I, rare card. <laughs> I appreciate that. I think I think you wait for me to process it. Um, yeah. What it says is you click, you take a core damage, then you run a remote, and on that remote, the corp cannot use any abilities um, of, of anything in the server. So like the they're ice in the server. Yeah, it just blanks every card in the server. So any upgrade with an effect loses its ability. So mana garm, anoetic. Um, Anything like that just is blank now, and then it trashes if you get in successfully. All th all the cards in that remote go into the garbage, go into archives. So I install it, and then I sit back, and I am just gonna let you take your time to process it before I spend my next click. <laughs> just, uh, there are some cards in that runner where you want to give your your opponent a sort of courtesy time to consider their options. Um, so, so normally this is probably use because it gets past right. mana guard. Like but in this case, yeah. it also, yeah. as soon as you declare the run, I can't yeah. use Spin Doctor. Like, Spin That's Doctor right. is a card in the server. Yes. So I exactly. have to use Spin Doctor as soon as you install this. Yeah. It takes me uh, It takes me a second to realize that. <laughs> um, but I eventually get there, and I'm like, oh, shit. Got it. I have to res Spin Doctor spin here. Now. Yeah. OK, yeah, so I do it. Yeah, nice. Res spin. Looks like I have a ping and an agenda, maybe a stegodon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so oh. my my dreams are dashed here. The echo is going back in. Which, yeah. if I'd played my cards a little bit differently last turn, I might have been able to get that and close the game. Yeah. So I think your last turn, if you had either trashed the spin or you had taken a core damage on the ontological, yeah, yeah. Either I one of those. You, <laughs> yeah. To be fair, it's like. I don't know that the taking the core damage on the ontological is like the correct play all the time, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Especially if I've cool. already taken one this turn. Yeah. But so you have no points scored. So in terms of tempo, like I am yes. okay yeah, to sit back here for a while and just build a board and pressure. 
I don't have anything that I need to really rush to try and do because I have four points at the moment. Yeah, and I can't even score easily because n normally I would feel good about that mana garm, um, but with Light the Fire, I don't really have a scoring amount. Yeah, that's true. So the, the Pulse is porous. I can get through it. I can just pop that Light the Fire and just blow up those two cards. And it costs me a click and I think uh, a little bit of money. But I also get an Plus extra trigger off, off that. Oh. So I'm going to set up a bit here, install Marrow, which gives me an Essa trigger and gives me plus three hand size. So I'm going to be at four hand size now. I'm taking four core damage. Usually I'd be at one, but plus three. I'm up at four. Let's hit a steel skin. Ah, that's, that's not what I wanted. Although I'm not going to be able to play Sure Gamble for a while because I have one credit. And Essa draws you a card after they take their core damage. I'm thinking about what to sabotage. I have a lot of ice in hand. So probably going to discard. <laughs> Maybe ice archives here is a move. Okay, I do one. Yeah, so I do one ice in hand. And D. So I have one click left. I cannot steal an Ikawa if one of those was an Ikawa, so I probably don't run archives here. Yeah, I'm just going to money up. And get within range again. Hope that's not. No, that yeah, I took a look Rashida, at that card, right? hoping it was a Rashida. It was not. Yeah. So, <laughs> tranquility is. So this is the Cascadia Altar Tranquility. Um, it is, yeah. That's that's quite nice here too because I do need money. Yeah. And we hung out at that tournament a little bit and talked between rounds and. Yeah, we never time. played, but you you played yeah. my buddy Alex several times in the startup tournament. That's right. Yeah. Did. We were we were in the top four and we had we had quite a several showdowns. He was playing um he was playing Isuat. Is that, right? is that yeah. how to say it? Yeah. Yeah. And so I lost uh, a Padma game against their Isuak and that was a that was a challenging deck to beat. A lot of weird ice and weird cards that I don't see very often. <laughs> so Alex yeah, I don't play startup very much, so any anytime yeah. I play startup I'm, I'm seeing some cards I'm not used to. Mm -hmm. It is a great time though. It's nice to have a restricted card pool, and you have to like think about some different choices that you don't usually make. Yeah. Well, also for me, it's like I'm just like, oh, I get to play Drago. Great. Yes, and boat. So I took full advantage of that and played Padma, and uh, Padma was wonderful. <laughs> I think did they announce a ban list for startup? I think they announced that they are looking at creating one, but yeah, there's yeah. nothing in effect yet. Yeah. So I suspect Endurance gets probably banned, Drago gets banned in Startup. That's just my bold, my well, my unbold prediction. <laughs> That's pretty reasonable. Maybe Keeling, who knows? Okay, so I'm probably considering like, do I blow up this remote with Light the Fire right now? Could that be an agenda, could be a spin, could be a third upgrade or a Rashida. It doesn't cost me a lot to do that here. Plus, I get my acid trigger. And I think just shutting down the tranquility is like really valuable. Yeah. So I'm not getting that value every turn. Yeah. Even if this is a low value asset, I mean, it's it's probably something good, right? It's probably either an agenda or a Rashida. Yeah, uh, probably. Could be a Bobo. True. That's like the best case scenario for me. But even then, right. you're blowing up a mana guard and a tranquility and a Bobo. Like that's for that's free, nice. basically. Yeah, it's real nice. suspect I'm considering, um, do I have something in my hand I don't want to hit if I take the core damage with Light the Fire, yeah. or do I just take that 1 in 3 chance? Or... Okay, so Botulus coming down. I'm doing a thing here where I mark the Botulus, instead of putting it on your ice so that I don't take a game loss for going over MU. Uh, I had done this before by accident at Worlds where I was over MU for several turns because a botulus was not in my program row. And so, yeah, that was a card I was sad to lose, I think. Yeah. But I'm shoring up my future in being able to get into archives if I have milled agenda points. So I put it on archives. It's like a future proof. And I'm going to blow up this uh, blow up this pretty gross server here. Totally. Yeah. Let's go. 
to Milanoff R and D. Oh yeah, that's the email from like, the fire itself. Yeah. So eat the click. Uh, I honestly wait, don't remember what the card here. was. <laughs> it's on the <this> server. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Let's see if it shows here. Nope. Maybe we'll see if I run our cards. All right, so I have no credits. I have seven, so you've got the economic advantage here, but... You're but you on don't your, on need, your heels with points here. You don't need any credits to get through into archive. So archives. on your next turn, you can take two credits and run archives. That's right. And that well, lets two botulist counters by then, and I can break two subs. Yeah. All right. So I put an ice on the remote and two cards in the remote. So I fully rebuild that remote. Yeah. Uh, the only downside is I now have no cards in hand. So if you're able to sabotage me, yeah, it then you have no choices. That's right. Yeah. These... Looks like we have about five face downs. That's probably for me the point as Essa that I'm happy to run the bin and check. I'd say like two is, eh, it doesn't feel great. Three, you know, I mean, if you think about the composition of an average corp deck, I'd say one in five cards is an agenda typically in most yep. corp decks. So running five cards feels like there's probably going to be an agenda here. Decent odds. Sometimes you run like nine, ten face down cards, and there's nothing, and that feels real bad. Okay. So, do you think I go credit, credit, run archives here? Okay, so there's Nikola. I think it's the right play. We'll see what you do. I think it's not a bad one, unless I'm worried about maybe a bloop or something, which has three subroutines. Uh, yeah, the but trash program would be fine though, because it would trash just the botulist. Which and you could not break ideal. two of the subs too. So you could, yeah. you could either break both trash programs and take a core, or you yeah. could trash, or you could break the core. Yeah. If I take the core, I get two mils off R and D since there's no cards in HQ. Which true. So that would actually you'd see more cards. So maybe maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I'm just gonna money up here, looks like, and try and build some counters on Botulus. And that's a great Stegadon triple advance. Yeah, so it's, I think and I did that Mero just to... I think I scored that just to like, get one agenda out of the game that you couldn't steal. <laughs> yeah, totally. But to be honest, it's not a very strong play here because I'm still nowhere near winning. Yeah. And I sabotage one more too narrow um and i still have like nothing in hand or maybe that maybe the one card i had in hand I, I sabotage so even though under normal circumstance i love scoring segadon it's mm -hmm. a pretty weak play here i think it was just like the best of some bad options yeah sometimes as a corp like when i'm on my back heels i just think like the runner is inevitably going to win this game do I want to end the game with zero points or one point? <laughs> like, do I want the, the bagel, like, total shutout, yeah. or at least get one point on the board? <laughs> you know? So I get that. Okay, so I've just played Ghost Tongue. You've milled two more cards. So get, Archives is getting pretty juicy, and I can get in pretty reliably here. Exactly. Like so there's like credit, eight cards. I think I run the Archives here. There. Yeah, there's no reason not to do this. Yeah. Got like probably an 80 90 percent chance of winning, yeah. It's feels good. I think that you had done, I think it was like two clicks into the turn or something, and I was starting to be like, Oh, maybe Dave's not gonna run archives. <laughs> and I was all excited, I was like, maybe I'll draw a spin doctor next. Yeah. Uh, so I, I res a ping, um, which okay. does tap. So at yep. least it does something against Botulus, yep. but yep. unfortunately it does not do enough. <laughs> yeah, so we're talking about what are the rules for flipping, yeah. <laughs> so they all flip and then the runner gets to choose what they the order of access. Not relevant. Oh this is not this is not a win here. So Oh it's not one oh. point in like ten or nine cards. <laughs> and now I have to make the tough choice. And I have a tag. So I know that's not good because I've played against your deck. I've seen it in the line. I can see it right now. But I did hit a spin doctor, so that's nice. 
So I have to steal the Stegodon, I have no choice. Is this your last click? I have one remaining after this, I can see. But only two credits, so I can clear the tag for all my time and money. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take another core damage here if I want to do that. But you have no cards in HQ and one credit, so... Yeah, so you top deck into the line and go credit credit in the line. I'm dead. So two yeah, so it's it's really tough when you don't have the credits because it means you have no clicks to go for it. Um, it's also tough when there's already one in the bin. Mm -hmm. So so I'm talking you through my decisions right now. It sounds like. <laughs> You already took one card. No, you already right? took one card. You can't. Oh, yeah, so that's why you don't want to. So, yeah, don't that's why I don't want to. Is, yeah. I don't get the precious mills. If I did, I would get to access two more cards right now. Mid-run. Mid-access. Good. I'm like, what is this upgrade? Is it some miracle? <laughs> I think... The best case scenario for that upgrade would be a Tranquility. Second best would be a Bobo, because I am super broke. Yeah, I'm I'm very in the tank here, deciding what what I do. I'm pretty sure I remember taking a core damage and clearing the tag here, going down to one hand size. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> yeah, I think if I was, I think that's the right play. I think yeah. so because if I had more points then maybe you're thinking more about well actually you're already ontological is already free so <laughs> yeah um, yeah it sure is <laughs> you have enough points that having a low hand size and losing to distributed into end of the line is like not yeah. a big deal like it's yeah. it's going to be a, in fact you're now at six so after this turn it's like impossible for you to lose to distributed end of the line uh, any agenda you steal is going to win you the game. Right, yeah, yeah, that's true. But you can tag me with ping. Is there any other way in your deck? I think those are the two. Uh, Jagarandi is the other one. Oh, Jagarandi, yeah, yeah. You can choose to end the run against Jagarandi, so... Two. Right, that's true. Again, it's like... <laughs> there okay. we go. Uh, oh, that sabotages. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Marrow. Boring yeah. out ontological for free, but taking a sabotage, which makes me yeah. sad. That stings a and, bit. And Part of the cards. Oh, we couldn't see it. I wonder what it was. We'll, maybe we'll I feel like it next turn. Been bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marrow is that's a really tough choice, right? You're like, I need to score agendas to win the game, but if I score this agenda, I might lose the game by milling an agenda. And I have your archives locked here with Botulus, so there's not a lot of wiggle room for you. There's some interesting racing on this. Like, you want to steal like an ontological here, like, before you take any core damage, and totally. I want to. Like, Score a couple agendas before you get one of them. Yeah. Yeah, closing out a game as dual with five points and just throwing an ontological in your score area feels pretty mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. All right, so I'm thinking, what can you do to me on that remote with one credit? Uh, you do have a Stegadon scored, I think, right? So you can get one credit during the run. Yes. And, uh, so you resin that ping is pretty good because then we'll tag you again next time you have the archives. I'm consulting my, I think I, after I saw your list, I think I wrote down all the ice from your list I could remember. So I'm thinking, what is this ice? <laughs> and what, what can you afford to res through? Yeah, I think, I can't remember if I had all 12 harmonics or there might have been one that I cut one of. Um, yeah, it was either 11 or 12. From uh, oh, you know what? Two. I think they actually the could have blue. blue. And the reason being that you oh, just yeah. really don't want to see blue echo, early. Yeah, like it's opening it's in. Like in. And you can reliably find like one or two with wave. That's um, right. Yeah. So even though it's like the best harmonic, it's also kind of like you don't need to see it early. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, that extra condition of de-resing de another ice is problematic. Yeah. On turn one or two, potentially. And it has two problematic things. One is you have to de-res. The other is if they don't have any programs yet. <laughs> yeah, good, exactly. Amazing. Like you'd still rather see like an echo if, if they don't have a yes, program. Yes, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, 
Yeah, it's like the old Archer problem. Do you res Archer when they have no programs, but it ends the run yeah. for you, and it's like crucial that the run ends, and you're like, oh, I wish there was some breakers on the board right now that I could snipe. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going for the Chastushka because I think it's unlikely you can afford to res this. We are going to stag it on here. So D res is a ping, which is that's a sweet interaction for you. You gain one, and now you can afford to res a wave. That's like the best case scenario. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. I can get my money back. Yeah. Uh, if it had been something else like an Echo, well, I mean, Echo would have ended the chest deep list. Or no. Right. Yes, it would, right? Because you had no. Yeah, I don't have Botulus. I don't have uh, Vodka Cat down yet. Benjamin. Yeah. So maybe, maybe Echo would have been the best case scenario. But Wave at least. Yeah. Gives me a card. I actually grab an echo. I'm like, I, yeah, I need yeah, something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something to stop me. Uh, echo's a barrier, uh, one or two strength barrier that gets zero power counters. Oh, it's a zero. Okay. Gets power counters that uh, equate to end the run for every time you res a harmonic ice, I think. Yep. So it gets more subs as the game goes on. Uh, Benjamin yeah. laughs at that and says, sure, has three million subs. It cost me one credit to break all of them. Yeah, it's not not good against Begemont. It's no, but uh, like no one plays Begemont. <laughs> yeah. Like it's a pretty rare card. You're probably only ever going to see it in Essa, maybe like somewhere else. That's kind of a weird choice, but and it's it's weak to Amakua early because Amakua yeah. can break any zero strength. But once you get like five or six counters on it, yeah, that's like, taxing. Amakua can break it, but not not easily. Yeah, it's going to cost you. Okay, so I'm asking, I think you're deciding on how many sabotages are coming out okay. and from where. I will not and I'm just clicking for money. Oh, no, I think I just, I think I had to do all from R&D. Well, yeah. no, I think I did Echo plus. Yeah, you know what's funny? I think I, I, I think I waved for Echo because I was like, I would love an Echo, but I think I yeah. sabotaged it anyway. <laughs> That's funny. I don't think I caught that when we were playing. Yeah, I guess I should have taken an ice I didn't want and then sabotage that. Yeah, right. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that unfortunately that remote was not a Rashida, which would have... That would have bounced you back maybe, nicely into the yeah. game. Yeah. Also, okay. none of those upgrades were Tranquility because it didn't res them. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking at probably Vovo and Manigarm. Yeah. All right, so here's my choice. Is there enough in archives that I can potentially win yet, or do I need to get a few more mills before it's worth taking the other tag off that ping? You have the money to res it here. I'm very poor. I suspect I don't run it this turn for those reasons. Yeah, it's tough. You you got really unlucky with one point in like seven cards, but like the nice thing yeah, is that that's, that's true. You know, the, the the points have to be there somewhere. So it's possible that you know your yeah. next couple of mills will be the win. That's a good way to think of it. Yeah, totally. All right. And the tank. And the tank. <laughs> the arms crossed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I'm just going to money up a little bit here. I can't hold more than one card at the end of my turn because I have so much core damage, so I don't want to draw a lot here. And if I like what I have, I might save it for a critical moment. And then, oh, I okay. think you just announced so a run. I did announce a run. So I've spent my third click. I have two credits in case there is an Ikawa. Yep. So I think my deduction here is if it's if there's no agendas, I can clear the tag. If there is an echo, I can steal it and win. Yep. So exactly. I That's break, and then you say, I say you win the game. <laughs> I I have thought about that sentence a lot since that <laughs> since that game stealer. <laughs> just it's just like such a nice, lovely way for you to be like, and congratulations. <laughs> Okay. So this is our third matchup of this exact these exact two decks, and I finally managed to solve it, forcing a game two. So uh, 
what's that called? Was this the grand finals? Oh yeah, and I earlier had borrowed a botulist from you. Um, I, I built my deck before I flew from Victoria to LA, and for some reason I forgot to get the third botulist. And then I posted in the yeah, Discord, does there. anyone have a botch list I could borrow today? <laughs> and I hope the one that I just gave you isn't the one that was on the ping. Because my friend Alec after went, oh, that was kind of rude of you to like put it in his face that uh, you just gave him back the card that won you the game. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't realize. I hope it wasn't that one. I, I certainly meant no offense by that. I did not think it was not being cocky. I was just like, oh yeah, because I set an alarm on my phone. Give yeah. Stephen back his botulist, and it had already gone like three times off. <laughs> All right. So now we have the final game of the tournament. I'm playing Reality Plus on the right, and you got Sable on the left, Stephen. What yeah. was your thinking for Sable for this tournament? Um, so I was an old school Leela player. Um, oh, yeah. And so when so Hermes came out, which is a console, <laughs> yeah. same ability as Leela, when, it, when you steal an agenda or when a corpse scores it, you get to bounce an unres card. I Back said HQ, that's yeah. great. Yeah, um, it is very Sable, good. Um, there's two good stuff criminals right now that are popular, 419 and Sable. Um, and 419 just never jives with me. He's all about yeah. like exposing, and to me, Netrunner is a game of hidden information. I'm like, I don't want to expose your yeah. cards. I want to like, <laughs> I want to play yeah. cat and mouse. <laughs> yeah. um, so Sable, I think, is a similar power level. She can get an extra click by running a random central server. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I feel like at least at least as much power level as 419, um, and just jive with my play style better. Yeah. Nice. It's a it's a different kind of power. It's not an economic tax like 409. It's a uh, I can get more clicks. I can get a five click turn, and I can do some gross things to you with those clicks, like play deep dive, yeah. for example, and steal four to five points if I get lucky. Um, so for me, I'm playing Reality Plus, which is the NBN ID that says the first time each turn the runner takes a tag, you either can gain two credits or draw two cards. And it's a 40 card ID, so I'm playing a 44 card deck here. And we had played in Swiss and it ended very quickly. I think I hit up a hole that was installed on the board. I did not have any time afterwards to draw cards or clear the tag when I was at uh, less than four cards. So um, that was a, a big mistake. Um, I'm sure I'm going to play much more cautiously here, learn from my mistakes. <laughs> Yeah, that's um, that's the hope in that runner, right? Is you uh, play Thule twice, figure out what what lines can beat it. Yeah. Sure, so this is our second time playing this matchup in the day. So um, we kind of have that situation where, as runners, we've had a tough time. How can we solve this deck? Yeah, it's true. Uh, there's out of our four games so far, there's only been one runner win. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can. Yeah, it was lovely to play you so much on the day, Steven. Um, you're an awesome player and a really cool guy. So we had, I felt like we had great sort of camaraderie through the games, even though these are like very high stakes Netrunner games. I really enjoy the ability to like still enjoy your opponent, even when things are tense like this, you know? Um, yeah. No, I had a lot of fun. It was great yeah. playing with you. Um, so I'm rolling my mark now. It's randomly decided at the beginning of the turn. Yeah. Here's the, uh, the Sable Dice from so, Toronto Worlds last year, so, which I uh, someone sent me a video this week, my friend Peter, that um, Andre from Metropole Grid did like a dice yeah. test with this dice. Have you yeah. seen this or heard of this? Yeah, yeah. No, I haven't like, seen this. Where you like super salt a glass of water and you put a dice in it and you just like spin it, like roll it and see if it can sort of tell the balance of the dice. And he found when he put it in the water that archives had a way higher frequency than the other, than the other two servers. And so that's weird. I did like 60 rolls with it this week and things were pretty balanced. R&D was like a handful less than the other two servers, but HQ and archives were about equal. So that's interesting. Okay, so click one. We were, you're going gamble. We got a dream net coming down, which you've put into oh. <laughs> your heap, but you are going to fix that. I, <laughs> I was just, I was getting ready for the ban. Um, so Null Signal said yes. that all Dream Nets have to go in your heap. So. <laughs> exactly. It's a thematic play. 
That's great. So you gain a click by running archives. You also drew a card. So that's a nice Sable interaction there. So you get paid something and a click. Click three Hermes comes down. So this is a good start for you. Got some money, more money. Going for R&D on last click with Dirty Laundry. So I see Hermes and I say, I'm going to res this Rashida in case you hit an agenda and bounce it. Yeah. So this play was a mistake because I only did it to try to bounce that Rashida, but I wasn't thinking about the fact that you could just res it. Um, right. Okay. Yeah. And so I should never have even made the run. And then I ran into a behold. So it's really yeah. a mistake. I now see so, uh, two tags. Two tags and uh, no clicks left. Yeah. And I'm, I'm now counting my cards. And I'm seeing, okay, I don't have four cards. There's, there's definitely a chance I die here. There's a chance. So Behold is a brand new card in the latest set that is like exactly like Snare. You pay four credits when the runner hits it anywhere except Archives. And if you pay four, they take two tags. And then as R+, plus, you get two credits back. So it really costs you net two credits to fire it. Yeah, so you just asked effective. me, do you have it? Is the game over? And I said, we'll see. I res Rashida, and I'm going to draw four cards here. R plus is all. R plus the money for Oh, you took I did, yeah. So I paid four, and I took So I'm going to see four cards here, and the top card is good for me. Four cards in hand. I'm asking your cards in hand, and the top card I drew is <laughs> off Rashida. So I did not have it in my hand at the start of the turn. Well played. <laughs> but you had two or three in your deck, right? Uh, three in the lines and two planograms. Yeah. So I could have planogrammed twice to see six <laughs> cards there and got money and hoped to draw one of the end of the lines. Um, yeah. There's You're also a there. mindscaping in that deck, one copy. So that would not have killed you. Only the end of the line was. But uh, So there are times when you're glad you put three very expensive influence cards in your deck. Uh, Totally. Pays off once more. So that was uh, West Coast US Nats. Uh, Steven, thanks again for the great games the in finals and throughout the day. It was such a pleasure playing you and all the other LA players. What a fun tournament. It was such a good vibe. And uh, yeah. big thanks to the tournament organizer, Richard, and uh, NSG supplied the mats. So we did get our mats. We'll see about the rest of the prizes, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, and congrats. Uh, this guy, Thank you, you also. Much into worlds which uh i think you're gonna make it right i'm going yeah i'm going in uh in about six days here so very excited to play it out see how it goes thanks everybody for watching